uh, chapter 11. And uh, we're going to talk about the Lord's Supper for just a few minutes and about why we do this. How many know sometimes we, we can do things that almost seem a little bit repetitious? Kind of like, you know, every morning you get up and you drive to Tim Hortons and you order this and you do this. And, you know, sometimes you need to change things up a little bit. And so we want to see why at the beginning of the month do we serve the Lord's Supper. And what does that represent? Amen? Amen. Amen. And so, uh, in the book of uh, uh, Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, I received from the Lord, which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night when he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Now we want to stop there. First of all, he says, I received something from God and I'm giving it now to you. How many know in order for you to be able to receive today what I'm talking about, you need to have the eyes of faith open. You've got to begin to receive this by faith and say, praise God, if God's talking to somebody today, he's talking to me. Amen? And so that's something to consider, that God is talking to you today. And then it says, so now I've received it from the Lord, and I'm passing this on to you. But notice it said, he was betrayed. How many know one of the, the, the most difficult things in life to go through is through a betrayal? And the Bible says that Jesus was betrayed. And yet he took bread. You may feel like you've been betrayed in a marriage, or maybe you've been betrayed in a friendship. Maybe you've been betrayed in the workplace. You should have got the promotion, and you didn't. Maybe there's some form of a betrayal taking place, and you feel like a tin can. And you're just, like, you're just crushed by the betrayal. Today I want to see, show you something, because even the Lord right now is prompting that, me speaking about the word betrayal. I want you to notice here it says, that Jesus was betrayed for you. Amen? Jesus was betrayed for you. And so it said, on the same night that the Lord Jesus was betrayed, he took bread. And this bread, which we're going to show you, is crackers in just a few minutes. But what Jesus is talking about is that his body, he broke his body for you. He broke, if you would, went to the cross... Because he was paying for your betrayal. Whatever situation that you're in, whatever you feel like. Maybe you say, well, Pastor, I've worked hard all my life and I've exercised daily and I've done so much. And now the enemy has stricken my body with cancer. And I just completely feel betrayed because I was trying to do such a good job. Well, praise the Lord. The good news is... Jesus, on the same night when he was betrayed, he took bread, which now represents his body, which represents the complete wholeness for you. But that's something that you've got to receive by faith. That's something that you've got to begin to step into and say, if God has said this, and God has done this, then somehow I've got to get from where I am right now into what God has done for me. How many know we've talked about this door many times before, and we can say, well, there's a whole life on the other side of that door, but I'm stepping through into a new life of what God has. In order to enter into what God has for you, you've got to leave from where you were. And where you were might have been broke. Where you were might have been full of cancer. Where you were might have been full of betrayal. Where you were might have been full of worry. Where you were might have been full of anxiety. But you need to begin to step through the threshold of the past and step into the future of what God has. And we see here that he said, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said. Now why are we giving thanks for something? You give thanks to something because it's something that is given to you. Something that is given to you. Amen? When somebody gives you something and you respond with a thank you, it's because you are receiving something. Whether you've paid for it or not, you can, we're not analyzing that today. The beautiful part of this is that Jesus has paid for it. But when Jesus says, I'm giving something to you, you respond with thank you. And so the first step of faith that you can begin to step out and do to move from your past into your future is to take that step and say, Lord, I thank you. That your body was broken for me. Lord, I thank you that those things that seem to so easily beset you. You know, the minute you're, you think you're going to get along with your spouse, suddenly, boom, it comes up again. Lord, I thank you that that broken marriage was healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that that broken body was healed in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you that that situation that you're in is healed in Jesus' name. Why? Not based on anything you do, but based on what Jesus did. 
And so Jesus said, when I had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Sometimes the most lonely place you can be is to think that there's nothing good going to come your way. And if you feel like that in the natural, you may feel like that. But that feeling is your, your, your five senses, your mind, your will, and your emotion. Those things that you touch and, and, and feel. But the bottom line is the Word says, I was broken for your wholeness. The Word says, when I exchanged my broken body on the cross, you now have the complete wholeness in Jesus. And he's saying, with thanks, receive what I have done for you. And so you have a choice to make in that. You could choose and say, well, I don't believe it's for me. You could say, well, I deserve this cancer. You could say, I deserve the broken marriage. I've been, I've been hogging the TV for the last 32 years. You can find any way you want to say and say, I deserve all of the crummy things I'm going through. Or you can surrender that to Jesus and say, I am moving from that past into the future of what God has for me, and I receive that by faith today. My brokenness I'm exchanging for his wholeness. That's really why he went to the cross. The cross is not something that we just sort of, you know, we celebrate the birth of Jesus at Christmas and then at Easter, and we do all of those things, and those things absolutely are so very important. But the bottom line is there really was Jesus and Jesus really did shed his blood. And Jesus really did pay for your life. And Jesus really did pay for the mess that you're in. And he says, today, if you'll take that step of faith and receive what the enemy has meant for harm, God will turn that around. Now, notice it said, take eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Sometimes we think, well, if it's the Lord's body, you know, we'll do all kinds of things to be the Lord's body. If we beat ourselves up enough, if we, if we just chastise ourselves up, you know, you ever, you know, remember the, you think about the monks that crawled up all the stairs and stuff to somehow pray and somehow God was going to listen to them because they do that. But we do those things in our own lives in many ways and say, well, I don't deserve to be happy again. I don't deserve to be able to pay my bills. I don't deserve to have another marriage. I don't deserve to, you know, have a, a promotion in my job. It's not about what you deserve. It's about what Jesus did. Because if we're all truthful, whether you think you felt fallen in one way, we've all fallen in every way. But Jesus took his brokenness and said, I'm going to be broken for you. Let's exchange. And so Jesus is showing here that his body was broken. Do this in remembrance of me. And so the next time you speak to your situation and say, I'm not going to say, well, I don't deserve to have any friends because for 32 years I was the most unfriendly person in the workplace. Maybe you need to say, Lord, that's changing. That's changing. That's about to change. Because, Lord, you said do this in remembrance of me. So I'm going to begin to act and live and receive based on what Jesus has done for me, not what you've done for you. Do you get the difference there? Because we could all sit and put our hands up today and go, oh, look at all the things we've done wrong. Lots of kettle of fish there. But Jesus took care of your kettle of fish. Jesus took care of your setbacks. He took care of your disappointments. He took care of everything at the cross and said, hey, if you'll receive this by faith, to receive something by faith, you need to do something with that. Amen. The Bible says without faith, uh, we can't please God. And then it also says faith without works is dead. So you need to step out and begin to say, you know what? I'm absolutely going to become the friendliest guy in the workplace. Now, don't overdo it in the first week. You really look like a weirdo, right? You know, don't be throwing parties for everybody you run into. And, you know, but you begin to make a decision to say, God has redeemed my life. The word says he's redeemed your life from sickness and pain. Now, whatever that sickness and pain is, I think you could take any category you want in that and say, if he's redeemed my life, then praise the Lord. This passage here says it's for me. And he says, remember me. Do this in remembrance of me. He said, my body was broken for you. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So this cup, if you would represents the blood of Christ. So that when you say, Pastor, you don't know how bad my life was. You don't know how messed my life has been. You don't know what an upside down mess, terrible situation I was in. When you begin to apply the blood to this, amen, 
How many know that when Jesus Christ shed his blood, he paid for everything that you think is a setback? And everything that you think is a setback, God declares a comeback. Amen? You walk through that door and begin to say, Lord, I just receive it today. It's not about what I've done. It's not about where I've been. It's all based on the blood of Jesus. So you've got a covenant right. Now that's the neat part. You as a Christian, when you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when you apply the blood of the Lamb to your life and have Him wash your sin away, you now take the, the body of Christ and say, based on my sin being washed away, the covenant says, I have healing. The covenant says, I have wholeness. The covenant says, I have every need met. The covenant says, and how many of you can't break that covenant? There's nothing you can do to run away from God. He doesn't move. He's with you. The Bible says he is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is a friend that will never leave you or forsake you. How many of we may forsake him, but he's not forsaking you. His blood has cleansed you from all unrighteousness. His body was broken for every angle that you think your life is broken. God said, let's do, do a sweet exchange. But you have to receive that. I can sit here today and we can talk about communion and we can talk about all of what God has done. If you harden your heart and say, well, that's just not for me. If you harden your heart and say, well, that might be for somebody else. That's okay. That's your choice to do that. But God is saying here, I stand at the door and knock. God is saying, my son has shed his blood just for you. God is saying, my son has broken his body just for you. Sickness, pain, disease, despair, doubt, discouragement. And if you say, Pastor, I don't know about all of this. If you're watching via YouTube and you say, I just don't know about all of this. How about just say, Lord, give me your eyes and your understanding. Give me, Lord, a, a picture on the inside of what really happened and what's available to me. God will do that. We talked today about divine appointments. God will give you divine appointment in your life. You've got an opportunity to receive all that God has for you. And he says, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. How many know old covenants sometimes you want to do away with? But he said, you've got a new covenant today. How many know a new covenant means a brand new day? You have a pastor, what about all the stuff I've done? You know, the word says his mercy is new every day. Every single morning, there's a new truckload of mercy. Every single morning, there's a new truckload of mercy. If Roger drove a new truck to church every week, we would say, he is so wealthy, he gets a new truck every week. Do you know that God says to you today, God is so wealthy in grace. God is so wealthy in goodness. God is so wealthy in forgiveness that he says every single day when you wake up, if you'll receive that, I love you, I forgive you, and we move forward. And you receive that through the blood of the Lamb, through the broken body of Jesus. So when we take communion, we're not just taking it and sort of say, well, it's the first of the month and we need to do it. We're taking it because God says, do this in remembrance of me. Remind yourself, this is why we do it. Remind yourself, this is why Jesus went to the cross. And we receive that by faith. Amen? Amen. Let's just, let's just take a moment as we, you know, the word says that we need to humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. And he will exalt you in due time. Maybe today you say, Pastor, I, I want to receive this covenant of grace, this covenant of wholeness, this covenant. But maybe you say in your heart, there's things that have separated you. Today I wonder if we could corporately pray. Maybe there's those that are going to watch this on TV and say, you know what, I'm going to pray that today. So just pray with me if you would. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come to you. I come to you. I believe in your covenant. I believe in your covenant. I believe in your promise. I believe in your promise. And today, Lord, and today, Lord, I receive, I receive Jesus into my heart. Jesus into my heart. Let the blood cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Let the blood cleanse me from all unrighteousness. And today I receive, today I receive wholeness. Wholeness. Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. amen. And amen. If you prayed that prayer, send us an email. We would love to pray with you and just to connect with you. But as a congregation now, it's very important when you take communion that you stop and allow the Lord to begin to move in your life. Now, I don't know that you need to sit here and go, well, "Okay, I've got to find every little sin that I've ever done because we're going to do communion." How about when we we've got a beautiful song we're going to pray and play in just a minute? 
Why don't we take that time just to minister to the Lord and just say, Lord, show me the future that you have for me. Show me the life that you have for me. If there's little things that the Holy Spirit starts to knock on your heart about and say, hey, we need to change this. And hey, maybe we can move that around. And hey, let's, let's change this in our life. Let's not act this way. Let's be obedient to the Lord because that's examining your life. But in doing that, we're receiving the covenant. We're receiving the covenant, which gives you open door to a new life. Amen? I'm going to have Jim come forward.